Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to a special English audition of The Voice of Slovakia. My name is Emilia Markiu, and I will be your host on tonight's program. After the fall of communism in Eastern Europe, there has been a revival of religion in this part of the world. In the first part of our program, we will be showing you a portion of the documentary, A Time to Build, produced by the United States Communication Campaign. This particular segment deals with the Catholic Church and the large role that it plays in the daily life of Slovaks. In the days of political and religious prosecution, the struggle of Cardinal Jan Koretz was an inspiration to many. After November of 1989, his life had changed dramatically from being a dissident to the present-day leader of the Roman Catholic Church in Slovakia. Karl Marx wrote the words, religion is the opium of the people. Both he and Frederick Engels, who together developed the Marxist theories, saw little value in religion. Yet they warned that its prohibition and persecution would only intensify religious feelings. Yet in post-war Eastern Europe, the churches came under extraordinary pressure. This was in spite of the fact that under communism, each country in Eastern Europe, with the exception of Albania, had freedom of religion guaranteed by constitution. But the communists interpreted freedom of religion differently in each country. In Czechoslovakia, the hardships were some of the most severe in all Eastern Europe. In a wave of crackdowns in 1950, Catholic publications were stopped, religious orders were closed, and many priests and nuns were thrown in jail. In the years that followed, churches were allowed to remain open, but with restrictions and priests had to be licensed by the state. For Catholics, two churches developed, an above-ground church, which operated with state tolerance but under severe limitations, and an underground church that survived in the shadows. Here on the River Danube is Bratislava, Czechoslovakia, capital of the Slovak Republic. Czechoslovakia was formed after World War I as the union of the Czech and Slovak nations. Each has its own language and culture. The country is nearly 70% Catholic, with the largest concentration in the Slovak region. During communist times, all of Czechoslovakia's seminaries, except two, were closed. One that was allowed to remain open was the Seminary of St. Cyril and Methodius here in Bratislava. In the mid-9th century, they brought the gospel to the Slovak people. Now St. Cyril and Methodius, along with St. Benedict, have been named co-patrons of all Europe. For over 300 years now, this seminary has prepared young men for priesthood. I think the priestly vocation has nothing to do with politics, 
of the society in which one person decides to become a priest. The basic thing for a priestly vocation is uh, God's calling, which is felt inside the heart of someone. The first thing that uh, touched me was the approach of the professors here at our faculty. They consider us as sons here. We can feel the love they have towards us. Standing up when he enters the classroom, it's uh, not only a tradition, we really um, treasure the professor. Most of us, we love him and that's why we stand up. It's, it comes out from the heart. I admire the professors because they had to go through hard times in the past. Zmeny, ktoré sa udiali na Slovensku, the changes that have occurred recently in Slovakia have influenced our lives and the lives of the students enormously. For a long time we had no possibility for contact with the outside world. We had no books, no personal contact or contacts with other universities. It was like living on an abandoned island, isolated. Since the end of communist rule, vocations to religious life in Slovakia have risen dramatically. Conditions in the seminary are overcrowded, with some students living ten in a single room. The graduation photos from years past tell a different story, when the state limited the number of admissions. Paolo Gladura applied five times over 20 years, but not until the new freedoms came was he admitted. Others had a similar experience. Two or three years ago, mm, it would have given no sense to apply for the seminary for me because I was already a civil engineer at that time. And uh, in the past, it wasn't possible for mm, graduate people to apply for the seminary. They wouldn't have been accepted because of the state, because they thought it would have been a waste if uh, educated people who finished university would have entered the seminary. These men will be ordained priests for the Diocese of Nitra in the heart of Slovakia. They entered the seminary during communist times, and now, after six years of preparation, they will minister to a society that is rapidly changing. The man in the Eastern Bloc now is focused on catching up with the West, on material advantages, technical things, scientific development, and so on. And this is suppressing spiritualism and puts it behind other things. The biggest problem is to show today's man that spirituality has priority before all that which is being offered him in the new life of freedom. It is ordination day in the town of Trenčín for nine of the graduates of the Bratislava Seminary. They will make their lifelong commitments before one of Slovakia's patriots, Cardinal Jan Koratz. Povolanie kniaza je povolaním navždy. The occupation of a priest is an occupation forever. A man becomes a priest in eternum, forever. Could it not be considered a miracle that these boys, who from elementary school to high school were taught atheism, that out of that, these boys five years ago, during a time of darkness, in hardships, can I say crackdowns, that these boys decided to become priests at the age of 18 or 19. And today, as young men, they are among us. I know Cardinal Koratz, and I'm happy I'll be ordained by him, because he's a man who's held the church above water for 40 years of repressions under the communist regime. He has been a lighthouse for the suffering church, for all the priests and laymen who care about the church. The story of Jan Koratz is a window to Slovakia's underground church. During times of great repression in 1950, 
At the age of 27, he was ordained a Jesuit priest in a secret ceremony in a hospital chapel. Less than one year later, as church leaders across Czechoslovakia were being jailed or fleeing, Jan Koratz was ordained a bishop. It was all kept so secret that for 10 years, even his mother didn't know. Býval som v jednej izbičke v podnájme. I lived in a small room which I was subletting. Within 10 years, I was interrogated 30 times by the secret police. For years, I almost never spoke a word aloud in my own room. We spoke only silently. Only silently. And all of this made for a very tense life. Despite living a clandestine life, he was able to train some 120 men for the priesthood, all ordained by him in secret. Father Karol Dorchek was one of them. I entered the seminary in 1949, and after 10 years of formation and studies, I was ordained by Cardinal Koretz, at that time Bishop Koretz. I was ordained at a private apartment on April 27, 1959. He ordained me without witnesses, because at that time, the situation was very tense, and they were watching both of us, so we were quite afraid that my ordination would be revealed. Shortly after that, we were both arrested. I was arrested first, and he was arrested two days after me. And we saw each other in prison and at our trial. It was but we were, from the year 1950, uh, started uh, spolo. From 1950 on, we were always together. And we were also in prison, and uh, we were judged together. You were both in prison together? Yes. yes. Together, yes. For how many years? In the year uh, 1960. 1960. 60, yes. And both studied together? Did you study together? Uh, he, he was, I have 27, he had 20. You were 27 years old. And I was already and then a bishop, and, and he was my <laughs> disciple. <laughs> <laughs> But now we are friends. It is no no distance. Cardinal Koratz was imprisoned for eight years for illegally ordaining priests and for maintaining contact with what the communists called a hostile power, the Vatican. When not in prison, he worked a variety of jobs. He was everything from a watchman at a chemical factory to an elevator repairman. And over the years, he wrote books, more than 60 of them. 15 titles were smuggled out for publication in other countries. Others were copied and distributed underground in Czechoslovakia without using his real name. What was the first book? The Fundament. Why did you write this first book? Why? Yeah. <laughs> the students have many difficulties many of difficulties. In the school, the Christ is not resurrected, etc. And the science is against the religion, against, the, uh, against God. And I wrote God, Christ, uh, Church, uh, about the competencies of the science. Uh, about the origin and evolution of the life. If they had been publishing these books, you could have been arrested, yes? Put into prison? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they have some, some um, instinct or, or indication that I, I write something. Also, the the secret policy have some notice about my activity. Uh, about my but, but you continue to write the books, mm. though. Yes. Yes. As uh, all, all other activities, I continued. Yes. <laughs> Let
U nás je dôležité, aby si mladý kniaz uvedomil, že bude ohlasovať. It is very important for a young priest to realize that he will be announcing the truth of salvation, that he will preach the gospel to people who for 40 years continually and one-sidedly were formed by Marxism and atheism. Now I came to the clinching and I had the possibility in public to consecrate in a church with many priests, with many believers. I had the possibility to consecrate nine new priests. It is some, something absolutely new for me. And now, for the benefit of our non-Slovak viewers, we would like to take a moment to introduce you to Slovakia. I would like to start with a message of goodwill from Slovakia by its first ambassador to Canada, Mr. Anton Hikish. Quote, message of goodwill from Slovakia. The birth of a new child is a for happiness and joy only for the members of a family, but for their friends too. Slovakia is a small, beautiful country located between northern Carpathian mountains and upper flow of the Danube River in the geographical center of Europe. The industrious population and close links with both the Christian and Western cultures helped her to survive a thousand years in hard conditions on the crossroads of strategic interest of the sensitive spot of Central Europe. The independent Slovak Republic wishes to live in peace and cooperation with its neighbors. They have had not only common past, but also present problems appearing on the way to free democratic society. Slovakia wishes to play an active role within the Visegrad Four together with the Czech Republic, Poland, and Hungary, as well as with its other neighbors, Austria and Ukraine. Slovakia's aim is to gradually create the possibility to be incorporated in the European integration structure. As the Slovak president said in the inauguration speech, I would like to emphasize that we are our success part of the world. And now some general information on Slovakia. Official name Slovak Republic. Area 49,035 square kilometers. Borders in the west with the Czech Republic, in the north with Poland, in the east with Ukraine, and in the south with Hungary and Austria. Population, 5,263,000. Capital, Bratislava, population, 440,000. Natural resources, antimony ores, mercury, iron ores, copper, lead, zinc, precious metals, magnesite, and many others. Religion, Roman Catholic, Protestant, Greek Catholic, Jewish, and Orthodox. Official language, Slovak. Minority languages, Hungarian, Ukrainian, Romani, and Ruthenian. Climate, continental with hot summers and cold winters. Average annual temperature ranges from 3.7 to 10 degrees Celsius. Time, 
one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. Currency, Slovak crown. Exchange rate, about 24 crowns for one Canadian dollar. <coughs> State symbols of the Slovak Republic. According to the Constitution Article 9 of the Slovak Republic, the state emblem is a double bar silver cross planted on the central elevated peak of the Blue Tree Summit in a red early Gothic shield. The origin of the state emblem can be traced back to the medieval Slovakia. Some of the richest royal towns such as Zvolen, Nitra, Topolčany, Skalica and Levoča, for instance, have the double bar in their coat of arms and seals. Historians have it that the first double bar cross symbols were brought to the Slovak territory in the 9th century by two saints, brethren, Cyril and Methodius from Thessaloniki in Byzantine Empire. Since in the 10th century, Slovakia had become part of the medieval multinational Hungarian kingdom. The Hungarian princes used the double bar cross as symbol of power, and that is why one can find double bar cross in the Hungarian state emblem too. Tradition interprets the Blue Tree Summit as the landscape of Slovakia, abundant in mountains, the Tatra, Fatra, and Matra mountains. The national flag consists of three horizontal stripes, white, blue, and red. The front half of the state flag bears the state emblem. White, blue, and red are the colors of Slavic nations. Identical colors have been used in flags of Russia, Croatia, Slovenia, and Serbia. Traditionally, these colors symbolize clear sky, rivers, and mountains, Red color is the color of love and sacrifice for homeland. During the last 40 years of the communist dictatorship, the use of the Slovak national emblem had been prohibited as nationalistic and antisocial. The revived Slovak flag and emblem were widely used during anti-communist demonstrations in the streets of Slovakia in November 1980. In the presence of Josef Moravčík, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Hermann de Lange, head of G24 coordination at the EC Commission in Brussels, the ambassadors of the G24 countries in the Slovak Republic, and representatives of the international financial institutions held a plenary meeting at Boric Hotel Bratislava on the morning of June 9th. Under the chairmanship of head of the EC Commission delegation, Leopoldo Giunti, the participants reached a general agreement on the particular importance and value of intensifying and improving the dialogue among the G24 countries and Slovakia. G24 consists of the world's 24 most industrialized countries, the EC 12, EFTA 6, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Japan, Turkey, and the USA. The international financial institutions represented were the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. It might interest you that the biggest present investors of capital in the Slovak Republic are Germany, Austria, USA, the Netherlands, Sweden, and the companies with the biggest investments are Ron Poulin and Volkswagen AG. Earlier this year, the Slovak community in Winnipeg has sent a letter to the Honorable Barbara McDougall, Minister of External Affairs, with request to open Canadian diplomatic mission in Bratislava. On September 28th, we received a reply 
from Honorable Perrin Beattie. We would like to read an excerpt from his letter. Quote, we have been following developments in Slovakia very closely and are interested in further enhancing our relations with the Slovakian government. Even in these times of fiscal restraint, the Canadian government is aware of the need to maintain a Canadian presence in Bratislava, and this question is currently under consideration." End of quote. In our previous program, we informed you that the Slovak American Foundation is sponsoring the first annual Slovak World Recognition Awards. The Foundation's mission is to provide direct funding, funding for educational and scientific projects in Slovakia. It was established as the results of the concerns for the future of Slovak education and science by two former ministers, Slovak educators, and the hard work of many individuals in North America and Slovakia. Consequently, the ministry has designated the foundation as one of the primary sources of support crucial to the success of Slovak education and science in the new nation. With such a designation in mind, I am pleased to announce that the foundation is sponsoring the first annual Slovak World Recognition Awards a two-day event which will be held this year in Washington, D.C. on November 12th and 13th. The two-day event will conclude with an awards packet which will recognize Slovak achievements around the world. The banquet will be highlighted by the presentation of awards recognizing two outstanding individuals for their contributions to Slovakia and the world. Jan Cardinal Koretz, for his lifelong courage and efforts in fighting for human rights and freedom of Slovakia, and his honorary degree conferred by Catholic University on Friday. Captain Eugene Sardinal, the last man to walk on the moon, for his pioneering spirit and courage in the Apollo space program, his work as a space scientist and upcoming honorary degrees from Comenius University and the Slovak Academy of Science. This concludes the news part of our program. We wish you a pleasant evening and a good night. <laughs>